All right, what's up, guys? This is my Chicago Open 2023 recap. Um, it was a tournament. <laughs> it was a good one overall. Um, we'll get into the games in a second, but before I do that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more great chess videos. Always helps a lot. I'm trying to get to 1,000. That would be pretty cool before my 29th birthday. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and start with my first round against Edward Danilian. Uh, something interesting about something I learned about Armenian people is when they have a Jan or Petrosian or well, who else is there? Petrosian, Petrosian, Georgian, Kachisvilian, some whatever there's in the Dion. What it actually means is son of. So this guy is basically Danilian means son of Daniel. So that is a little Armenian for you. Uh, something I've learned as being literally just because I play chess. Otherwise, I would have actually literally because I know my friend Gunnar Anderson. Otherwise, I have, would have no idea um, what that means. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this opening, which I actually played um, wrong, but I thought I was playing it right. So actually, I prepared for this Grandmaster in Europe, in Italy, the last tournament. And I thought that this was good because the Grandmaster lost against this. But... Um, was actually just not a good variation. Just because someone loses doesn't mean the opening is good, even if it's a grandmaster. So that's why it's good to have a teacher or a coach or a sensei to let you know, like, hey, you should be doing this or you should not be doing this. Um, and I should also know that better. Not that it's really bad, it's just unambitious. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the engine on so you all can always see. Like you see, this is still fine. Um, but when you see this structure, so I'm gonna go 95 and pretty much get like a stonewall structure. You pretty much, you want the bishop on the outside out here or here. That's going to be the better way to play in these positions. But, okay, I just play. And, I mean, almost the good news here is I thought I was doing well, so I wasn't even worried about not being worse. Now, okay, this is a very interesting idea. Like, I did think about take, take, and doing all this kind of stuff. But I thought it was obstacle of bishops, and I wasn't convinced that this is going to be enough to win. Um, now, this is something that I definitely need to work on. Like being able to decide like in these positions, is this enough or is it not enough? Because when you play e4, you're very used to, if it's enough, it's like gonna be checkmate, there's tactics. You're seeing your, yourself attacking pieces. With d4 and c4, it's gonna be more about space and potential and I guess, uh, like I said, structure and space. So here, I'm, the reason why this is so good is there's not really a good way to, to guard f7, though, which is, Pretty tactical, though. I, okay, so this is actually what I was worried about. Take, so F takes and then he holds. So apparently D takes is really good, um, but it isn't so trivial. Seeing like, am I really going to push these pawns? And I did see that he can go Bishop A six, Bishop D three, like plump this guy over here, and then I thought like uh, that Black is just chilling. So very different from what I'm from what I'm used to. I apologize for the Tweety Bird. I know that, that hurts some people's hearts. <laughs> I will try not to do it again. So anyway, I just kind of try to go for the attack. And this is kind of the first inaccuracy that I made. So I saw f6, but I thought I could go bishop h4 here when I was originally calculating this variation. Now the problem is he can go g5. And I was calculating this really hard, really long. And at first the computer is like, well, no, you're fine. But then it's like, wait, this is just a draw. So the reason this is a draw is I can take here. That way I don't lose a piece. And now he takes here, which I still saw. I'm going to go queen g4 check. So now if he goes king f7, this is just gg, knight e5. I guess rook c1 is good too. The idea is if he takes, I go f takes, and now this is all coming in. He's got to lose the knight and the queen, and just like, this is gg. The problem, though, is he can go king h8. And here, I was looking at bishop takes, pawn takes, and then I was like, all right, this knight isn't dead yet, but how do I get it out? So I was looking at, okay, so if I try to go rook c1, He's gonna, if c6, then d5, and I think I'm fine here. Not fine here, but um, I'm not dead here. The problem is he goes bishop c8, and now I'm going to lose the knight. So the other th option I can have here is I can go queen f5, hitting f6, and he doesn't have time to go bishop c8 because I take you a check, and now I'm definitely chilling. But the problem is after queen f5, he goes king g7, and now all I can do here is go queen g4 check, and then that's just a draw. And this kid's feed A is about... 1800 or 1900 um, and it's round one so I'm definitely not trying to draw especially if it's gonna be that quick of a draw like I need to be some fight and some you know some resistance you know what I'm talking about 
<laughs> all right so here uh bishop uh h so instead of bishop h4 i go knight g4 just admit defeat queen f7 queen h3 rook c1 i'm just trying to get my pieces out and this is when i start realizing like wait i think i might just be worst here so bishop b5 and he played a really good move rook e7 so if he goes like rook a d8 i was trying to do some fun stuff with bishop h4 and then knight to e5 like knight right here if i got the chance so let me go ahead and see if i can put that if i put it in, in a different move order so that's rook, so let me try rook e d8 bishop h4 rook c8 and then here i can do something like knight e5 because after this this and this like everything is falling apart for him um if he moves the queen and he one he can't really move the queen anywhere and two like i'm hitting d7 I'm hitting d8. I'm threatening e6. No, I did it again. E7, so I'll just do it this way. Threatening e6 uh, with the pin. So it's, for example, queen e8, I could take and then go e6. Or just e6 here, and he's pretty much kaput because everything's stuck. So that was my idea, but it was kind of a ho che hope chest. Um, now, rook e7 was good. I still go for this. And if I got another move, like let's say he made a random move, like rook b8, now once again, this idea works. The problem is I knew for sure he was going to go bishop a6. So not only is that the best move, it fits, it, fit, it, fit, it was fitting the theme of what he was trying to do. He was trying to trade off a lot of pieces and then get an end game. So with him already trying to do that, I knew for certain he was going to go bishop a6. So yeah, it just suited what he was trying to do. So he goes bishop a6, take, take, and this is where like, oh man, I think I'm worse here. So now here, this is something that you're going to want to avoid if you do get this kind of structure. Don't let them go c4 and just roll you so if i go like rook d1 here he can push c4 and it's just a free play position i'm never going to have enough pieces to break over here eventually he's going to break over here and i'm just going to be down a pawn or worse or he's a pass pawn or everything's here it's going to be tough so that's why here i open the position that way at least these pawns can become weak in some foreseeable future so take rook d1 just making moves basically trying to re-stabilize regroup and that's going to be a huge huge a theme that you're going to see throughout the, the the tournament so rook b5 a4 um rook b3 so here i was thinking about rook c5 and uh, i just trading it off um another thing that you really want to think about here is when you are worse or when you opponent has more space try to trade off the pieces one it's going to make your life easier you're going to have more space and two the pawns that are over pushed and pushed very far um they can actually become weaknesses or targets because they're they're uh further off from from the army so rook b3 <laughs> bishop a5 knight f2 so we're just making moves queen f5 and he actually missed something nasty here um so bishop c3 was better be more patient don't rush it okay queen f5 rook here h3 because rookie one is actually threatening mate um and then here he had this idea knight d3 knight takes and then g6 and i would have just actually just been lost here because my queen is trapped something insane now if he was on time pressure which once again is it going to be a theme you see throughout the tournament my opponents being in time pressure but it is foreseeable and, and honestly like i didn't really see it but i was very paranoid about my queen being trapped um so it's understandable to miss it but that would have been a very non-ideal way to start the tournament so he takes here bishop before um g6 now he had some ideas like well i mean once again this is a little bit ridiculous but he can really try to trap this queen that was something that we didn't really see too much like even here bishop takes rook takes and then try to trap the queen would have been messy but um he goes g6 i take now we get this position so here this is how okay so f5 is actually a very important move because right now it's just equal he has a target on c4 but it's equal pawns but when i go f5 now at least the pawns are a bit loose so this is how you kind of want to want want to try to win these positions make weaknesses it's an end game and then push your pawns so this is a good start at, at making weaknesses Rook e5, rook f4, I don't want to trade off too much. And then here soon is where he makes the first blunder. So this, check, here, here, and now I can get away with bishop takes knight. Now if he takes the rook, now this is not going to be some super easy endgame, but I do have two pieces for a, a rook, and this pawn, I think I have knight d1, and I'm holding, and I'm going to consolidate, I'm going to reroute this bishop to c3, and start targeting his pawns. And that should be a pretty fun position to play, um, and definitely easier to win than the other position. So take, take, rook c4, um, knight e3. Okay. No, no, so th he almost played knight e3. And this is why I was kind of frustrated, because knight e3 is just game over. I'm going to go check, check, and he's basically going to be checkmated over here, or he's going to lose some serious material. So I was like, in my head, I was like, all right, he's just going to do this. I'm done. The, the work is over. 
but he thought about it he hesitated and then he went king g6 and i'm like all right well here we go and this is kind of the first problem that i say i would say i made um in the in the tournament it was um and the theme that I'm seeing again and again, it's after making a series of good moves, I start taking a couple moves off and being like, okay, well, I did the hard work, now let me just cruise, and then eventually he'll make a mistake. So as you can see here, knight e4 is very strong because I have a lot of threats on the pawns, on the king, um, and it, st it stops him from doing what he wants to do. But I just moved a random move, knight d3, because I was like, whatever. But okay, so knight e4, the idea is I, I believe I want to check and then start targeting h5. So... Yeah, so the king g7, knight g3, and then just get this pawn. And let's say he goes knight e3 here, for example. Wow, this is actually just checkmate. Nasty. Because then rook f6 or the, the back row. So knight e4, I mean, it's not a super intuitive move to make, but I do remember at this point I just wasn't even looking to make an intuitive move. I was just like, let me play. So knight d3, check, just making some moves. And then here, like, I don't even know how I missed this. Like, I don't even look at h4 check. I was just like, well, let me just move. But h4 check, if he tries to take it, um, I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to win a rook because his king is pretty much checkmated. And this obviously would be a much more ideal way to play the position than what happened in the game. So rook c8, knight f4, check, knight f2. So I was thinking about taking, but this end game is just going to be not enough to win, I believe. Like I can take this, he's going to be okay. Um, so I was not a fan of going into this position. Um, even though I'm up a pawn, like with two rooks, the two rooks can really gang up on something. And if I trade this pawn for this pawn, the two on one, it should still be a draw. Um, if I can get two pawns, if I can get both of these pawns, then yeah, I can win. But he's got two rooks, he's got activity. It's going to be hard to do. So that is why I keep the knight with knight f2, rook e2. He's really been consistently trying to trade the whole time. Knight e4, I'm trying to get a pawn. Um, so b3, the idea is if he takes it, I'm going to take with check, move this knight, and then try to get this pawn. Two connected pass pawns are very, very strong. If I can get that, I'll be in good shape. So here, he's doing well, and I kind of get this kind of bind position. Now here, <laughs> this is actually what the computer wants to do. Ready for this? It wants to go rook takes, knight takes, and knight takes pawn. And after king takes, it thinks white's is slightly better. How in God's name could white be slightly better here? That it's like one of the most ludicrous, silly computer things I've ever seen in my life. Like, is like the easiest driver. It's like saying king and bishop versus two pawns is also slightly better for white. Like, no. <laughs> I mean, the king is underneath. I don't understand. So here I keep it. He starts pushing. But I'm not actually too worried because this actually is going to help me at least try to win too. Because now if I win this pawn, I'm going to be able to have connected pass pawn and then eventually it's a matter of time so knight f3 knight f4 check here king g3 and here is actually where he's like really focused um and then all of a sudden he freaks out and he looks at his clock and he's like oh my god i ran out of time and then once he did that i freaked out because i wasn't even looking at time i had like maybe 15 20 minutes and he had like he had like five seconds before this but then i'm like so focused about this pawn i'm like dude if i was, i mean i can actually lose this if the pawn goes too far um, so, I mean, this is actually a very interesting thread that the game went where like if the pawn is back here He can easily make a move, but the pawn being here It's practically harder for him to move because he has to worry about losing it But also he has to think about can I win too and by giving him both things to think about it made it easier for him to flag Which I'm mean, not totally on purpose, but it is part of like I want him to push this pawn to make my life easier So that is a very interesting round one um, Let me see if I can pull up these notes that I have yeah, I love Taco Bell and Ho Ho. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna pick up the actual notes after this. But not that those are two uh, very true things that I, I am a big fan of too. Ho Hos and Taco Bells. So, all right, that's round one. We're gonna get into round two right after this. All right, so this spreadsheet <coughs> is something that I do for my students when I teach them. I have them write down the notes from each game, um, just things to to work on, to focus on. That way, they're conscious about it and they're writing it down. So I was like, well, why don't I do this for myself? So um, from round one, the big things that I learned was like, don't be silly in the opening. Like I should have known better not to have done that variation. Like get that bishop on the outside. Um, so that is definitely something that I learned that I wrote down. Um, also look over games with Sensei, because I actually got this opening later on in the tournament, but because I never looked at it, because I was like, well, I beat a low rated. I was like, well, it doesn't matter. But then I got the same opening later, and I didn't know what to do then, because I didn't look at what to do now. 
So that is completely my fault and is something that I will make sure doesn't happen again. And then the other one that's really big and something that is very fl fixable, but you have to be conscious about, is don't coast after a long battle or after a good sequence of moves. Like I worked so hard to get a winning position and then I kind of just took a couple moves off and expecting him to lose and then he didn't. Because um, just like how I'm a fighter, my opponents are fighters too and they're not going to just give up and do nothing. So that was also something that was very, very important. All right, so now let's go to this game. The next game I played was against Grandmaster Nikola Midkov, very strong Grandmaster and friend of mine. Um, so we get this position. So the idea with a4 is now the bishop can actually run away and my knight would get trapped on a5. So that is why I take here now. So take, take, bishop b6, you know, just getting your pieces out. And now here, like the, the pawn breaks that you want to think about are trying to go for d5 or trying to go for f5. And because his queen was on f3, I was more willing to try to go for f5 because I thought I was hitting with tempo. Now here I went knight e8. Um, and the reason I like knight e8 better, better than knight d7 is uh, I was definitely trying to go g6, f5. And if I needed to, I wanted to go knight g7. I wanted to have more pieces by this king side ready to help and ready to attack when it, once it gets opened up. And now remember, if you have the two bishops, you do want to open up the position. Good things will happen. So he goes knight g3, g6, bishop h6, knight g7. Pretty much all perfect moves too. Just queen c7, just moving off. I'm getting ready for f5. And here is when he goes knight f5. So I have actually two options here. And this is why I never looked at knight f5 really seriously. Because I was like, worst case, I'm just going to go knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, and then bishop takes. And now I can play this position. It's bishop and pawn versus a rook, but I do have the two bishops. Eventually these pawns are gonna start going, and then I should, if I can get it going, like I will have a good attack. Um, now he is up in exchange, so it's not like I'm winning, or, he, or I would say he's winning, but it's gonna be a very nice, long, complicated game, which I was, I was down for. But then I saw this tactic. So after knight f5, if you guys want to stop and try to find the defensive sequence here, um, basically what black can do is go pawn takes. Pawn, so queen g3. So if he, if he takes, I'm obviously just chilling. So, okay, so queen g3, he's attacking g7. So we're just going to protect that. So bishop f6, take on f5, bishop takes, queen f3. And now the idea is if I move my bishop, he's going to take on f6. And then it's going to be really dangerous back here. Um, what else can I do if I try to support my bishop, like queen d7? He's going to take here. Or he can even go g4. So actually this? Oh, sorry. This is not nonsense. He can go g4, and then I'm going to be pinned. And that's the problem here. So here I find a very nice in-between move. I go e4. So the idea is now he can't take anything because his queen's under attack. If he moves his queen to like f4 or g3 or something, I move this with tempo or I can take this knight. So I'm fine there. It happened again. I apologize. So knight takes e4. Here I go bishop e5. Because the, the idea is what he wants to do is go bishop takes knight. And then after I take back, he can take here on f5. My king is in very deep water. It's going to be dangerous, not fun. And he is having a great time here. So here the idea of e4 is now after bishop e5 and he takes on g7, I can take on e4 with tempo. And now he can't save the extra piece. His queen moves. I'm going to take the bishop on g7 pretty much no matter what. And I'm just going to be winning and better here. So what he plays is knight takes d6. I take on c2, which is still, it's not greedy. It's just maximizing. So rook, uh, rook here. Bishop takes d6 is would have been just so much better. Like this was just so silly. Like looking back, I'm like, why did I do this? Look, look when you're up, trade and simplify. Like why am I letting it? So basically... I went bishop g6, so I was like, well, I'm going to keep the bishop here. It's going to be easier for me to play because I have two bishops. Um, and then eventually I'm just going to win easily. So this is another very good example of me coasting after making a series of good moves or de good decisions. Instead, just take on d6, take away the strong knight, move your rook, come back, and you're fine here. And then here it's like all he has is a pawn, and it should be a very trivial way to finish the game. But instead, I, I try to keep the bishops, but I also have to keep the strong knight on d6, which is really constricting my forces. Um, and I, I could take, but then the dark squares get weak, which was something I wasn't really excited for. So rook d8, uh, rook d1, knight f7. Um, f5 would have been, I think, more simple as well. Like, okay, if he takes this, it's fine. 
like now I really have the two bishops and at least I have more space. Um, so this is another thing that's very important. If you get winning positions, take space. Like don't be, don't start moving backwards and giving your opponent momentum because that was exactly what I did here. So knight e6, but I'm basically I'm just trying to trade, get pieces off the board, and now he starts coming. So rook d7 is a straight, is not the best move, and you can already tell because it's a weird move, and I'm moving in a line of fire. Instead, what I should do is just simple moves. F6, get the bishop from there to here, where it's solid and cemented, no problems of being trapped or anything, and then um, black is doing better here. Something very interesting is like, um, I remember during his face after rook d7, he started making like, hmm, are you sure? Like, is that the right decision? Um, and I mean, when I play, I try not to like ever pay attention to it, or at least try to give information off of it. But it's more out of curiosity. Like, is he trying to tell me something, or is he like ner generally curious? And I think it's just like, I think he made a bad move, dude. And uh, that's why he played f4. Now here, I could have gone f5, but okay, well, let's see at f5 real quick. So f5, I was scared about some pin on this g file. Bishop h5. That's what, everything else is, is is worse. But bishop h5, what's good is I hit d1 with tempo, so I will get some time here. But once again, it's getting very messy. So f6, uh, sorry, rook e7 here. F6, not trying to get trapped. F5, uh, bishop e8. So bishop f7 is possible too, but then g5 looks very dangerous because f6, the g file, everything. So bishop e8, I'm just trying to get out of my own way. So if you went g5 here, my plan was knight h5 here and rook g7, because he can't take, so let's say he tries to take this. Um, I have rook takes g5, rook g2, and then take, well actually, this is definitely a little bit sketch, but take, take, and queen e7, and I will give you getting pawns. He did get his piece back, which is definitely progress for him. Um, but I guess he was worried about his king, as I was hoping he would be. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he went rook g no, 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 so he didn't go rook g2. So he didn't go g5, actually. He went queen h4. And then here, oh, this is very important. If you're being attacked, if your opponent's trying to put pressure on you, do attack back. Don't just sit there and take it. If you don't have your opponent's respect, then they're just going to keep coming at you, and that's when it gets very frustrating and almost like intimidating or scary. But here, queen a5, and now is when I start getting some play. So this, this, I could trade, but I was like, well, I can actually try to attack him. His king is weak, and I have time. So queen e3, and now he starts to panic. And once again, he is getting in time pressure here. This is a great part about me showing up on time, uh, like dressing well, sleeping well, like being um, on top of everything. Like, I w time was never really a big issue, and it became an issue for a lot of my opponents, which is how I survived or finished or how I won, literally won games, like the last one. So queen here, and now is when like you want to start getting your pieces in. So here I go take, take, push, here, and bishop check. Once I get this, it's pretty much game over, because all my pieces come in, and he has this pin that he has to worry about with the, the knight and the rook. So this, here, and now just move forward, get your pieces in, and then after this, it's game over. Now I have to watch out for some, 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 some silly things over here, but the hard work is done, and black is now just winning, um, as you can see by the, the, the two-piece difference um, in this position. So, I mean, not my first Grandmaster win, but it felt good. I started, now I'm two out of two, um, which is an excellent start. Um, and uh, now let's go to round three. All right, what's up, guys? I'm back. And here we have the most exciting chess game you will ever see in your life. <laughs> so I get this position. I pretty much kind of know the read. Whenever they go b6, you're supposed to take on d5. So I take here, once again, I play this position against uh, this other international master, McAvey, in US Masters, and like, I got a pretty good position, so I was going for that, but I didn't know what to do if he goes knight takes, and of course he goes knight takes. Um, now I took, and I didn't know what to do if he goes queen takes, and of course he goes queen takes. Now here there's a pretty fire variation. I can go bishop e2, and after bishop b4 check, Knight d2, take, and of course, this is very hard to see over the board. But bishop f3, take, king takes, queen takes f2, king c3, and then after c6, protecting the rook, h4, and now the queen is trapped. So literally some insanity. So, I mean, I guess the pawn sack I could have conceivably saw, but I pretty much said, like, after bishop b4 check, I'm like, stop. Like, this is like, you don't really know the opening. 
Like, why am I going into something so crazy? Like, I could just as easily look like a complete idiot. But that's why I think it's important to actually analyze through, because I think it is possible to see, like, uh, this variation, like, at least up to here. Like, if he doesn't take the knight, he's just losing. So he has to do this. Now, king c3 is some cojones for sure. Um, king d3, I, he gets tempos. If I go here, there's bishop a6 check. So that's not going to be good. But, I mean, next time I know. But, I mean, once again, like, this is you just need a lot more practice games. That way you're more confident and you're more aware of these ideas. So, once again, that is a big thing that I'm trying to do um, to get ready for the big uh, string of tournaments coming up. My bishop takes c7 would have been very greedy. Once again, it's actually okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know, dude. Bishop before check, knight d2. I mean, I'm up a pawn, but he gets so much activity. Now, factoring the type of player he is, I could have kind of gone for this. But you're also taking a risk of just getting squeezed and just being worse. Or even worse, just like losing. So, I mean, I kept it simple, which you're going to see a lot with people who play new openings or play openings that they haven't done so much in the past. Um, so, I mean, basically we just trade everything off, unfortunately. I mean, it's, I didn't really have an option here, and he's just a very solid chess player. Now, I will say, like, since he's a solid chess player, maybe d4 was not the best approach. I could have done something that's more, I guess, not like cagey, but like less direct. That way he has to, like, decide what he's going to do instead of just going boom, 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 and then just kind of trading off the center. But, yeah, so I take rook c1. This is all kind of forced. And then, I mean, we just make a couple moves. Nothing crazy. Now, b4 is a very interesting idea in bishop d3. So computer says this is actually better for white. But, like, if you get to this position, like this, like, wh how, I mean, why would you just not be like, wait, I'm just down a pawn here? Like, how would you look at it and be like, yeah, white's definitely better here. And, like, the only move is king h8. Otherwise, it's winning. So let me go a little bit deeper, actually. King h8, bishop e4. And I'm guessing... Like, what's the idea? Bishop takes, knight takes, and I guess now the bishop is um, loose, because if it moves, I get a g7. But also, I could take on h6. I mean, this is some madness. Like, bishop b2, for example. And okay, maybe his pawns get a bit weak, but he's also up a pawn, so what does he have to worry about? So that's just some computer madness that me and my sensei always joke about. Just like, what? I mean, what is this, dude? This is ridiculous. So anyway, I'm not going to go for this pawn sack. So let me just guys show you the end. Um, knight e4. Bishop b2, bishop f3, and then we just kind of trade off all the pieces. Um, and it's just kind of a simple position. I think there was one tactic you could go for. No, so knight c3 is, I mean, it's okay too. Yeah, I mean, this is fine. I mean, there's just nothing, not, very little in this game. Like, even here, he offered a draw, and I was like, maybe I can try to squeeze him. But, I mean, he's actually the squeezer, so why would I try to squeeze? I mean, I could try to squeeze the squeezer, I'm not so bad at it. But... It's just like, all right, fine. I played up, I played I am. Okay, I, I drew with white. Not the worst result. Not the most exciting game, but that is my game against International Master Kevin Wang. So on to the next one. All right, so before I get into round four, let me go ahead and go through the notes from round two and round three. So round two, great opening choice. Definitely got a good battle of the opening. Avoided some crazy stuff. So actually, he is a master against the Sicilian. So I was definitely trying to avoid playing the Sicilian. Um, and the French, um, I played against him before. It was a draw, but I was getting tortured for like 100 moves. So I don't know if that was the best option either. So good opening choice, especially with how the position went. Um, then great read of the position and great tactical awareness to actually believe in my position and not just be like, well, he's a grandmaster, so his tactics must work. Now, something that I should definitely work on is keep it simple when winning. And don't coast. This is another. This is one that's it's there in the last one, and I'm actually going to go ahead and and copy this down so let's see I guess I'll just put it here because otherwise I got to do a whole bunch of hoopla to move everything but yeah don't coast even after like not after a long battle but after getting a good position so I'm gonna actually change that to after getting a good position times two because now it's appeared twice so that's a one huge thing now that I have to work on because it's it's appeared twice um, and then let's do the Kevin Wang um, game. Bad opening choice, factoring the player. Um, I guess we're going to see a lot of that. <laughs> um, low risk, but once again, I guess it is okay. And then lastly, play more practice games, or I need to play more Blitz intentionally. So this is another thing you can do if you don't have a bunch of training partners. Um, 
just play blitz but after every game analyze it and save it in a folder and say okay that was that practice game and at least now i know the position because i analyzed it and i took notes and stuff so you don't need a training partner to get training games it's a little bit better because you can study you can target certain openings but i will say like you can do it without it you just have to be conscious and aware about it it's like one of the books really talked about deliberate practice and i would say that's going to be what that means all right so next game i'm going to go over is against polish grandmaster oscar wasirik um once again well i'm never gonna play this opening again because <laughs> it was not ideal but let me go ahead and, and show you so he went knight f3 move one and he's exclusively an e4 player i didn't see any games in knight f3 so i was like what is going on here um Maybe he's trying to induce a Stonewall Dutch, <clears throat> something like that. Um, so I played this variation that I know doesn't work against this setup. Like you need them, you need to go d4 in the, in this. But I wasn't really worried about d3 either. I was just like trying to get a position. Now this is a bit funky, I will say, like a little funny looking. But um, I mean, I think it was fine. Actually, let me go ahead and add the engine too, so y'all can see what what's going on here. It was maybe like 0.5, maybe 0.6 for him. Yeah, like not even that high. <clears throat> but what the computer really liked in this position, very interestingly enough, was to take on c4 and make him go, um, actually, let me go move ahead. So queen c2. So go b takes, pawn takes, and knight d7. And this I thought was kind of strange. Oh, man. Chest face is hurt. Sorry. It's been a really long day for my computer. Um, I hope the video is okay. So basically take, take, and then like knight d7. And I thought opening up this diagonal would be counter what I want to do. Um, but I guess this just keeps it simple, and um, this the slot structure is just very solid. So that is definitely something I'll keep in mind for future future games and stuff. Okay, so we're just gonna play, make moves, do my thing. I was here I was just like develop pieces, nothing crazy. Once again, B takes D takes, and ninety seven is better. So a couple times in this uh, tournament, I was trying to be fancy, and by doing that, I was like, okay, let me go knight a six, provoke a three, and then I can swing my knight to c seven, and it's fine there. But the problem is he kind of gets stuck there and like it doesn't look that bad because i can always go knight c5 or knight c7 but i would say a big theme from this tournament is just don't go knight a6 because that was a common theme now here i get this brilliant idea and it kind of came to me later um like like just now like oh my god i can try to go for a stone wall or something like that so knight h5 and then f6 um and then here i could either go f5 or e5 so i was thinking about f5 f4 but I wasn't super sold on it. But this I thought was gonna be very, very nice for black. Like I was like, I have a big center, and then here I was like, all part of my plan, G5. Just take controlling the board. Now, as you see from the evaluation, this is actually the wrong direction that I should be going. Instead, I should kind of be like, you know, just like chilling here, nothing crazy. Um, so, I mean, actually one of my friends was saying is like, instead of doing all this, I should finish uh, fixing up this side before I go for all this, but I thought I was just like playing really good chess and his body language like suggested that he thought I was playing really good chess too because he was playing pretty slow. I was starting to build a pretty good time advantage here and like he didn't seem like he really knew what he was doing and I guess this is what happens when he doesn't really play knight f3 and I don't really play this. So both of us are just like, I think I'm better. He thinks he's worse and he was reading that or he at least wasn't confident he was better like plus almost two here. So I wanted to go rook c8, but knight a5, and I didn't like this direction. Um, but this is the more controlled approach and probably what I've gone for. So then I saw this cool idea. I was going to go queen d6 here and bishop c8. And I was really trying to get some kind of checkmate over here. I was trying to go g4, f5, rook f6, rook h6, and like checkmate him. And I thought I had space and everything. So b4, g4, and he plays a really nice move here. But here's where his time pressure really begins. Like he maybe has like... 10 minutes for the next 24 moves he goes knight c6 which is a good move um funny enough if he just went knight d5 knight d2 he might just get a better version of it because i wasn't really looking at this and here like knight d6 takes c6 is just killer but i could also have seen it and just consolidate with bishop d7 knight c7 and normal stuff um okay so he, he does the wild stuff take pawn takes take here and basically the way it's going to end up is he's going to have uh, a a rook and three pawns for two pieces, but it's opposite color bishops, and I thought his king was kind of weak here. So here I was completely fine. At least I thought I was fine. I was like, this is no problem. I could win this too. I'm not even like worse, or maybe I'm slightly worse. So take on b5, knight c7, and I'm basically going to just migrate everything to the king side and try to attack the light squares. 
So Bishop h3, and now I did think he might sack the rook here. Because if he sacks the rook, he's going to have like four pawns for a piece or something. Two, four, six, now he has all his pawns and I have four. So yeah, so he would have four pawns for a piece, but I thought he had some weaknesses. I could hold the pawns and then once again, I could try to win this position. So I'm very optimistic here, probably. I mean, I think the optimism did help in the sense where it's like I equalized eventually, like I'm, I'm playing very actively. And you see, like, I think his, it, he's really, like, in tune with my optimization, my optimism. And he's, like, playing in a sense that I start clawing back in this position. <laughs> I think we might have to give my computer a slight break after this. Everything is, like, slow motioning. All right, so anyway, queen c4. Uh, now here, queen d7 is better. I mean, it's all kind of the same idea. So king h8, f4, queen d7, queen c6. And here, my, my genius idea is to take here and go queen c2. And then by some, I wouldn't say by a miracle, or just by like geometry and the light squares, I thought I was holding this just just fine, honestly. Um, rook c1 is some madness. Yeah, I mean, I can always just come back and like, what does he do? Um, and I knew he was in time pressure, so he's gonna try to make forcing moves and just take pieces to keep it uh, simple and to try to get to move 40. So take, knight takes, queen d5. Now here I have to choose, so knight d6 first, sorry. So this, and I have to choose between queen e4 and, and, uh, and take on a4. And I really, really, really did want to go queen e4. But I got worried about these pawns. I was like, these pawns are going to start rolling. And then I'm gonna, he's going to have a passed pawn. And I, I, if he doesn't take on e5 or do anything, I have no threat. So that's what I was really worried about here. If, if I have no threat and these pawns just start rolling, uh, I'm going to be in trouble. But I think the maneuver here, let me see if I put it in. I feel like I must have. Yeah, so queen e4 a5 knight f7 here let's say i like take take and then knight here and just sack the knight and then i actually have perpetual here which is insane like this queen queen check queen check queen check and he can't ever run away because my queen just stays on e4 f3 and here so his king will never have a path out to one of these squares and like this is the thing with this game like i think there's a lot of chances to draw this if i mean i guess if i had more time too because I wasn't getting super low on time, but I probably had like 10 minutes here. Um, and maybe I was playing kind of on his clock too, trying to like put pressure. But I also thought if I take all these pawns, I have very good winning chances. So that is how this kind of happened. So, okay, let's go back to queen d2. So instead of queen e4, which would have been a great move, I uh, took on a4. He took here, take here, here, and then knight f7. I'm really, I'm now I'm really solidifying and holding the fort. So e4, he's trying to get some space. And here I think is, the, is one of the critical moves. So here I want to go for knight g5 and like all the checkmates and attack him. But if I ever do something like this, through some miracle, I, I guess, he has this queen d8 check and I'm just dead. It's like so unfortunate. So here I have to clarify this. Now with h6, which is supposed to be good, the problem is I saw like at some point he can promote to a knight he can go pawn push check, promote to a knight, and then checkmate me that way too. And I was like, this is insane. Like, how is this is actually like working for him? So then I go h5. Now here instead, just go king g8. King g8, and like, I forget that the back rank is so solid for me. Because in my head, I'm like, okay, if he, get, if he gets something to the back row, I'm dead. But the only file he can do that is the d file, and I have two knights on that square. So if I do this, I think I can win this game. I get to torture him. He's got to worry about the threats, the light squares, and he only has, I mean, I guess he still has three pawns for it, but they're all blockaded. And once these knights start hopping into some good squares, he can actually have some major problems. And remember, he's also got 10 seconds here. So the problem is the way I played it, um, it just doesn't work. <laughs> so check here, and I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, where's the win? Where's the win? Where's the win? So I'm really, like, focused in. I go bishop g4. I'm like, all right, dude, I'm checkmating him. He's, like, on death's door. Um, king g2 and I'm like no you gotta be kidding me every knight move knight g5 knight other knight to g5 he has this queen sack and then the pawn push check and then I'm actually just down in exchange here and then here like I'm like this is the one move I have to make in time pressure and I'm like panicking panicking and I just go like king h7 and then I realize dude after h3 my bishop is just trapped here and then it gets from bad to worse because after this he just goes queen f5 check and trades off and then it's just game over so this is my first loss in i think 14 games so i was a little bit annoyed but once i put it in and realized there's no mate 
It's actually before my computer explodes into smithereens. Let me see if I can uh, show you guys the variation that I was calculating. So bishop g4, king g2, and I was like, okay, I can go knight g5, I think. So not king h7, so knight eg5. He does the queen sack, which I saw. Yeah, so this is, okay, and let me even show you guys this. So take, take, pawn push, check, here. And if, the, okay, no. If the, if the pawn was on h6, there was no checkmate with knight f8. I think I was just tripping. Or I guess the knight was covering the square, so that's why I, the queen was covering the square. Anyway, so this, and I was like, I mean, dude, there's mate here, of course. Bishop f3. And it, I think in my head, I thought he had, okay, wait, wait. So I was like, bishop f3 check. <laughs> yeah, and so in my head, I thought his queen, queen on e8, and then he could go after queen check, he could go b5 and block. But the crazy part is he just goes king f2, and there's nothing. Like, I'm just not enough pieces. One more knight or a dark for a bishop or a good pawn and I can mate. But here he's just, like, he's not even just winning, he's completely winning. And he was like, man, I'm, I'm sorry, like, I guess I got kind of lucky. I mean, it's not really luck, and I guess he trusted my value, my, my, my position. We both trusted my position more than we should we could we should have. But um, there's definitely chances to not lose there. There was multiple chances, and, like, that's where, like, I need to be very accurate and not just be like, okay, I must be winning here, or, like, I think I'm winning. You have to find the right moves and, and be precise and, and all these kind of things. So this is a good battle. Like, in the, like, the first two minutes after this game, I was upset, but then I was like, man, it was a battle against a strong player. It's going to happen. It's understandable. Just get back to work and do your thing and, and no problem. So on to the next one. All right, so Peter's still breathing, kind of, so I'm going to try to make another... Another round. Um, so before I go to round five, let me go over what I learned from round four. So bad opening choice. He played knight f3. Should have played man mode. But I was just like, nah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, now the next thing that was kind of bad was in the position was wild. I was overestimating, which is funny because the other games I've been underestimating. Um, so really, it's, you got to think about like what's going on. Like I knew there were holes in my position, but I thought there was space. Uh, had some space things but when there's too many weird things happening in your position like I would think it's better to uh, at least underestimate it so you don't so at least you're seeing potential sacrifices because his sacrifice I actually didn't even like really take into account um, and then I mean we both kind of like our heads were in the same space where we thought like he probably thought he was slightly better and I thought I was like fine um, but when the truth is he was just doing really well um, and this is why having a good pace base for the position is important and then the last one is the color complex for the bishop. If he has a dark square bishop, just put your king on a light square, and that's going to avoid all the discoveries and all the kind of nonsense that happened in the game. So that was the kind of the big lessons. All right, so the next game I played was against Artyom Samsonkin. The strong I am is pretty good. Um, let me go ahead and just skip ahead to this. So this game, like you actually already have seen the opening. Um, it was from the round one game, but this one, I was like, man, I should have looked, o looked over it. Um, now I'm just going to try to not to play the exact same thing, but of course, I played the same exact thing. Um, and I think, as we said, the bishop on d2 should not be there. Now, I was thinking about going knight b5, but he made it seem so obvious, the bishop d6. I was like, he, I thought he was just going to like move his rook, and then if I take, I have the bishop here, but he can go c takes and control like all these important squares for outposting in the knights. Um, so that's why I didn't go knight b5, though. If the bishop was just already on d6, I would have gone knight b5. Um, but okay, so I just go rook c1, a6, knight e5, you know, the same kind of stuff. And this is where I thought I was worse, because I got the same position, but I think in a worse way. But even here, like, this is like the opposite of the last game. Like, I was under-evaluating my position. Like, here I'm actually doing fine. Like, actually, if I look at it, if I put the engine on and attempt to attempt to overrun my computer with the little energy he has left, um, like White is doing fine here. Um, it was more just in my head with the evaluation. Um, so okay, so 92, I mean even here, like I'm doing fine. The bishop c3 was bad, and like here is it's a big case of like, do I do this or do I do that? And this is why practicing and getting games, and also just knowing the opening. Like if I get good positions out of the opening, it's gonna be a lot easier to play, but if I get these confusing weird positions out of the opening, I'm going to be like, uh, this doesn't really look good. This looks confusing. I'm not sure what to do. So anyway, so I go bishop c3, 
and then he gets c4 in and this is actually an idea from the the first game where it's like once you push these pawns and he gets this uh three on two on the outside here like these pawns are strong and like my pieces can get stuck and my attack really isn't that existent right now so a3 94 g3 so just making moves moving towards this side um so here and then this is where i pretty much realized like okay i think i'm worse here like let me not get too crazy with position so when you're worse when it's complicated when you're not sure what to do something i really learned from this tournament is just like trade and simplify so here i went bishop b4 just to trade pieces he pulls it back i take 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 and here and now okay so like he has the two bishops but at least it's a close position my pieces aren't too wild or crazy um and now i kind of just kind of play chess so bishop a5 queen e2 rook c8 knight b1 trying to reroute and here's where i was just like all right i made it now my position is not worse now i can actually start trying to attack or do something and the problem is once again i coasted after making a series of good moves i was just i didn't even take it in account what is he trying to do with bishop d5 and if you want to try to look you can find out the tactic that black is setting up um and my two moves were knight c3 or f5 now if I don't even look at what he's trying to do, but I try to push him back and don't give him time to push forward, then a lot of times, like, if you do good things, good things will happen, and you'll avoid bad things by doing good things. It's like if you have a healthy lifestyle, generally you're just going to have nicer or good, better things happening to you. So that's why here I should go knight c3, um, but instead I want f5. Queen g4 was pretty nice too, just kind of moving over there. Um, but the whole idea is after f5, he can go c3, and now he's threatening bishop c4, and I'm in trouble. So b4, bishop c4, now I have to just make the most of another, this is a, another classic, here we go again position, where it's just like, well, here we go again, man. I guess we're going to have to just keep fighting. So queen c2, take, knight takes, now if I go rook takes, um, he goes bishop c7, and now if I take this pawn, like, this is just going to be too much. I can't come back. It's going to be very hard coming back from this. I need both knights and more pieces to try to, like, hold the fort, like, literally, in this position. So that's why here I go knight takes f1, bishop b6, take on c3, queen d7. Like, we're just making moves. Basically here, like, okay, I'm worse, but, like, here I find this very nice move, queen a2, um, pinning the, the rook and the king, threatening knight d2, threatening this knight to come here. Um, so he goes king f8, and then here... I go knight d2, rook c7, knight b3, and he goes rook c4. Now this is a very important moment, because here I knew if I went knight d2, he was not going to repeat. I, but I just hoped, Once I played hope chess. Once again, I made a series of good moves, and then I coasted. Instead of that, I should really be focusing here. Like, And I was thinking this, like maybe I could even win this position. Like if this knight gets to c5, for example, and he goes like take and pawn takes, so let's just put this in, for example. I'm fine here. Now here I'm losing the f5 pawn, which I don't have to do. Like here, all you have to do is go queen f2. Then I'm going to put my knight on c5. And then I'm actually like, I have chances to win. Like I have blockaded really well. I've taken away a lot of squares. And like his rook could get trapped. Funny things could happen. And then maybe his king gets weak one, once upon a time. So that would have been much better. But I played some hope chess. And here he has this nasty tactic. Rook takes d4. Pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop takes knight, rook takes, and then if you guys want to try to find it now, you can look. But basically, you just go e3, and there's no way for white to stop this pawn or this back rank checkmate. If the knight moves, then queen d1 is mate. Um, if knight f1, it's just the pieces are useless. They can't do anything. Even e2 look pretty strong there, too. Oh, yeah, rook c1 is the best move. So, I mean, I just got kind of lucky there to that he didn't see that. Um, but, I mean... It was like he could so he so knight d2 he al he also has a good move with rook takes c3 but take take and then rook b3 and it's like here he has to be very precise if he wants to really get ahead and i think we, we, we both missed this idea if he can just sack the bishop because there's always back rank in this in this pawn so if he had seen that i think he would have been good to go um but here now i go knight i go rook c3 he let him take the pawn and then queen c2 and then after this like it it says minus two but I think white has definitely seen darker days. And this is going to be not as bad as what happened before. So f5, rook c6, my pieces come in. I thought he had to go queen d8 here. That's what I was thinking during, during the game. 
but yeah, I just take my time, set up, and then the pieces are just kind of stuck here, which is huge progress from what it was before. So basically, he gives the pawn, tries to go for an initiative, and I'm just like, all right, dude, it's been a rough, it's been a, a very back and forth battle, and my back and forth, it back and forth between completely losing and being slightly worse. And I was just like, all right, I've had enough. I'm not going to try too hard to win. Let's just take some pieces off. Admit that this was a, a tough round, but at least here, like, I'm not dead. So here we get this end game, and then um, he tries to go for. I mean, I, even I think anything should be okay. But okay, yeah, take it. But yeah, and this idea of this rook a2 was very annoying, where he's gonna go rook f2 and push, and then I might get in trouble. And I think actually any all both those moves lose. So yeah, I mean, once again, at this point, I am very focused on not messing this up. Um, so this is the opposite of the coasting idea that I kept having. I was just like, all right, we just got to finish this. I got a couple more important moves to make, and then I'm fine. So king e1, and then here it's a very easy draw. He can take the pawns, but now his king has no shield from all the checks from the, the back or the side. Um, and then here I can just repeat, and then <laughs> so one of my uh, friends was like, can you win here? And I was like, no, nah, I don't think so. This is just not enough. But I will say I did win the moral victory of being on death's door multiple, multiple times. But surviving, grinding, not giving up, and finding a way to kind of break through and then not die. But once, okay, I'm, honestly, I'm going to go straight to the lessons in this one. Because it happened like multiple, multiple times. Alright, when you're attacking, you need to attack. That's out of the opening for good, for sure, and for good. What is my opponent trying to do? That's, I mean, that's just like elementary stuff. But I should have it. Let me see if I find any other times twos or threes. Don't squander good opportunities. So I'm gonna play that. I'm gonna put this as don't coast after a set of good moves. So let's see. I think that's times three. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I might have to write it down a bunch of times as a punishment. But yeah, don't coast after a set of good move. Set of good moves. I'm seeing it again and again. Don't play hope chess. I don't know if that happened um, in the other games. And then great, great fight and st stabilization. So I will say that, like the the fact that I did this against an international master, a strong player, like there is some good things to take away. Like, hey, I can fight and survive. But once again, you don't want to keep living like this. It's it's very dangerous and it can become a problem. So solid game, I would say. And on to round six. All right, so we're almost there. Round six, seven, eight, nine. Computer is hanging on. He's making a lot of noise, but we're gonna get there. Um, so this is my round six game against national master Michael Takahashi. Um, so here I saw he was a very solid player. He played French and QGD. Um, and I was like, all right, let me try to attack this guy. Um, I also wanted to just attack since it's been like like a thousand years since I really attacked someone. <laughs> so here, like I play this like pawn sack in the French and get a pretty nice position. Um, just like H4, you know, just like squeezing him, doing some fun stuff. Bishop F4. Bishop, I mean, Bishop G is just weird. But okay, this, f5, and then you just bring in the pieces. Like, this position very flowy, very played for 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 itself. Queen b6, b4, knight d5, bishop c4, um, take on d4. Obviously, with this knight, if I take with the other knight, then the bishop on f4 hangs. That would be very non-ideal. So this, g6, bishop g5, bishop g7. So take, take, and here is, like, where all the PTSD from the other rounds um, finally actually helped me. I was like, all right, let me just make sure everything works. So there's two moves here that you really want to consider. They're going to be knight f4 and queen b3. So queen b3, the reason I didn't play it is I thought he would take on e5. And of course, I think this is winning. Like there's just so many, so much pressure on his position. But he did win a pawn, and it's, it's a little bit of a moral victory for him. So I was like, why do I give him a pawn when I can just like get a nice position? Now the other thing that you have to calculate here is knight f4, bishop h6. So bishop h6, um, this pin can be annoying, but I have a good combination where I don't have to worry about it. Now if he tries to take on c1, there was a bunch of little things here. Bishop takes, king takes, queen takes here. And if he ever takes this, I have rook d1, and he's busted there. Um, so that was one of the variations. Let's see, what else did I have? So bishop takes knight. I was gonna go bishop takes, king takes, and then knight e2 check and just pick this up and, and his position is collapsing very fast. There's one where he could take the queen. Uh, so yeah, so rook takes c1, 
I sorry, I could take the queen. So take, take, queen takes. And if he took here, then I had rook d1 and I skewered the queen. Um, and then I would be winning here. So those were the ideas in this position. Um, and now the last one is the one he played, and this is what makes the position not so busted for him, but like pretty busted for him. So take, 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 take. And here, like I was like, man, all these tactics, everything, and now I get a pawn up endgame. But the thing is, this pawn up endgame is actually just so good for for uh, for white. It's like, I mean, it's not just plus one; it's plus five. The re the reason is, I have a protected pawn over here, and he's gonna lose one or two of these pawns really fast because I'm ahead in development, and knight c5 is just gonna be unstoppable pretty much. So knight c6, I go knight c5. Now he can't take here because I have rook e1, and I, I pin and I win this obviously. So castle. Now I could take this pawn if I wanted to, but what is the rush? I have all the time in the world. So f4, knight d4, so his threat is knight e2, um, which is kind of annoying, but here a very good move is just rook c4. Um, and um, if he goes knight b5 or anything else, I'm just gonna keep pushing him and then take, and then it's just game over. And here he is busted. So that was round six. Um, so basically, actually let me go ahead and, and, and put in the notes from this game, but this one was very nice and I'll, I'll tell you a small story after. Um, so good opening choice, good pressure and calculation is all I can say here. So actually this is the one game where I finished really fast and we were really thinking like, all right, I mean, it's like five hours. We finished at like, maybe like five o'clock, six o'clock. And I think there was, there was like a blitzworm in that night. So we were like, should we drink some beer at two or three and then go to bed at 10 or 11? But we said we're not going to drink during the tournament, so we're just like, all right, we actually drank some Heineken Zero, some non-alcoholic beer, did our thing, and then we were just chilling after that. So that was the idea with this game. Um, all right, so three more games, so let's get into the next one. All right, so this is my round seven game against Tugs Tumor, Yasen Tuner. Uh, he's a Mongolian, Fide Master, young kid, very good promising kid I guess don't really know him that much <laughs> um, and basically we're gonna start with this position so it was another one knight f3 and this time I decided to go with a pure stone wall uh, setup and of course he didn't go d4 he went d3 so he can try to go c4 and e4 now this position is very frustrating to look at because here I knew in my head if I go e5 here I'm just gonna be like slightly better the whole game like okay of course he's gonna have some pressure there's gonna be some stuff going on but this position is very easy and natural to play. Have a lot of space, you're chilling, no problem. But here, I was trying to be fancy, and this is very interesting or ironic, because around four against the Grandmaster, similar kind of idea. I went knight a6 first, assuming he had to go a3. And after a3, I was like, all right, now I go e5, and I have a better version, because I provoked this, and then I can hop in with my pieces. Um, but unfortunately, he doesn't have to go um, a3 because knight b4 isn't even a threat. It doesn't do anything. He just moves his queen. So this is definitely a very bad evaluation for me because now he goes bishop b2 and now I pretty much never can go e5. And I'm just like, dude, if I just did the right move order, like it's just butterfly effect. It's like if either position goes this way or goes this way. But like one move really makes a big difference. Um, and this is a great example of that. So I go queen e7, just knowing, just like, <laughs> this is another one where I'm just like, well, here we go again, man. I know it's coming. He's not going to do it. And he goes bishop e5. And I'm like, well, all I could do is try. So knight b4, queen b2, c5. And this position is okay. It's just a different position, and it's not the normal Stonewall Dutch. So he definitely won the opening battle here. Um, and it's not about me playing the wrong variation. It's more about me just not finding the right move order and execution of what I should be doing. All right, so anyway, so take, take, we just get our pieces out, there's normal stuff like this. And I mean, even here at this position is not so bad. Like, all I have to do is take my time and stop him from what he's trying to do. So like rook c8, so actually, I mean, here it's even more evident. He's obviously attacking the queen side and this c pawn. So here I should just do good things to avoid bad things. Go b6, go rook c8, cement this so there's no problem. Then I can go trade this away. But I go bishop h5, and I miss this idea that he has. It's very nice. 
And it, the, the, pro, the reason that it is so nice and it was easy to miss, because now I give him a bunch of tempos. He goes boom, 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 boom. And all I'm doing is reacting, reacting, reacting. But if I just first make sure that everything is okay, then I don't have to react so much and I can see the punches coming. So bishop h5, queen c3, b6, b4, knight d7, only way to protect this, and then d4. And the idea is if I go c4 here, he has knight takes pawn, pawn takes, queen takes, and he takes on c6, and I'm just busted in this position. So that is another one. Of so basically I have to go take, he takes here, and I do this. And this is another where it's just, well, here we go again. Like we got another tough position. Let's try to fight and hold this one, I guess. Um, now, he, I mean, he played it very cr uh, clinically. I mean, honestly, it just played itself. Like, nothing super special happened, but he he did try to get all the most accurate move orders. But yeah, this, this, here. And like, these, these Rook and Pawn games, like, only if White just takes his foot off the gas is am I going to have any hope. Problem is, like, every move he makes is just so natural. Like, there's really just nothing he can do that is going to get it and not winning endgame. So this... Um, let's just get through this pretty fast king here and then my only hope is to try to ruin his pawn structure now here like this would have been great if he had taken so if he took here i actually have excellent drawing chances like immediate drawing chances so this is good to know that h and f versus king or c and a versus king is a draw it's holdable and this i had in my head but the problem is he just doesn't take he goes king g3 and now here like it's just a matter of time. So what he's going to do is he's going to push this pawn all the way down and then check my king and then he's going to have a queen. So the other method of defense I can do is bring my king over. But the problem here is now the king gets cut off and is just too far. Now here like it's, it's fine. It's too much. So basically here what killed me was the move order. Um, now let me go ahead and go to the notes here um, so that we can see what happened. All right, so yeah, poor opening choice, but all things considered, like the opening was okay, and that's why it's good to, to be able to play multiple openings. But the, the killer was the move order. That was, um, this was, that was very, very bad. Um, what is my opponent trying to do is, is now times two at least. Mm, yeah, so that's the first one with Sam Sonkin. And I think those, because the first couple games was, I just played well. Um, but yeah, so what is my opponent trying to do is starting to creep up there as a problem that I need to fix. Um, the fight was pretty decent, I would say. Like, at least I didn't just get burst in flames, in the words of Taylor Swift. Um, <laughs> or go down in flames, I'm sorry. Um, but apart from that, I think it was a pretty solid effort in the losing effort after everything is bad. But yeah, what is my opponent trying to do? Stop that. Like, that you need to stop his plans. Um, we're seeing that time and time again. All right, so two more games. All right, so this is round eight against actually a friend of mine, Kapil Chandran. Uh, nice guy, super nice guy, like very, very nice. Also very good at chess. Um, he has a very interesting style where like they get these attacks, um, but like it's like always kind of like, like basically all the pawns in the middle get locked and like it's all the way out here and all the way out here and the kings like do a bunch of walking and it gets very wild. He attacks in a very uh, interesting way, I would say. Um, now here, let me go ahead and start with this position. Um, so here, this is always a very good thing to know in the French. Before you go c5, because here knight b5 is a problem, you need to go a6. <laughs> so a6 just prevent this. And actually, I was thinking to my, myself, um, I'm going to put the engine on this game, because like, you all will see this is what miracles look like. <laughs> this is literally just a miracle. So all right, so knight c6, castle, c4, this is a uh, I'm gonna say not a super well played line, but I think it does pretty well for for black. I mean, even though you see the eval, it's gonna be a pretty wild game. So this um, b5. Now here, if I want to slow the pace, and I was thinking about it, um, I can go knight b6. And now if he takes on e6, we go bishop takes. This is very solid. And now I can try to come back and go b5 and do all my my things over there. But I was like, all right, let me attack him this game. Like this is my path to victory, and I've played this position before. And here, no, this is like ridiculous. I mean, this is kind of ridiculous, but computer actually is like, hey, not too bad, but not too much, especially if you don't know it. Um, so, b5, take, pawn takes here, and I knew the theory in my head was knight b6. I've looked at this position way back, and I was like, 
okay just play knight b6 but then i was like okay wait i'm a different person i can play more slow solid chess like i don't have to go all out anymore and like i'm gonna have a good attack so whatever so like an idiot i go knight f8 like this would have been the man way to play and then just kind of rip try to rip them open and stuff but i'm like all right no i can do this dude so this castle here bishop e8 so this is when i was kind of lost where i was like can i attack him or do i need to take my time like i was kind of lukewarm is the best way to put it like i wasn't fully on the attack and i wasn't fully on defense and uh being lukewarm is a very bad place to be for sure um okay so anyway so king b7 bishop h3 and now i go aha i have this great idea i'm gonna sack a rook so i go bishop f7 here and then knight h7 so my idea here which actually isn't even that great of an idea is take knight takes queen d7 take rook takes and let's say for example he goes like rook f2 so i wanted to go knight g5 bishop g2 and play this position and okay he can try to go rook f8 but it's going to take a sec and i can stop it and this knight on g5 anchors down a lot of things i'm holding this square the knight can literally never be moved and then i can start pushing here and trying to attack here so this is my brilliant idea now the non-brilliant part about it is he doesn't have to take with the knight he can take with the pawn so pawn takes and now knight g5 and the problem is after knight g5 he can just take on e6 because <laughs> now if knight takes bishop takes i'm sorry bishop takes rook f7 and i'm just dead like it's over so here is where it's another where it's just well here we go again man it's just like again and again and again like bro just start looking at things um how many times you got to get punched before you're like it's probably not a good idea to get punched so anyway so pawn takes knight g5 here so now you just gotta start throwing because like what else are you gonna do so knight e4 queen e3 queen b4 i mean here obviously he's just completely fine in this position but i have to start making some kind of attempt at this now here i basically it was very easy to calculate for both of us that in this position this is not going to be enough to break through he's going to do this here and then i was looking at some c3 ideas but it's really just fine and like he has material to give right he's up a whole rook um so okay i have to pull it back a little bit and at least try to wait for a more opportune time to to wait to unleash my 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 one overhand right left um so bishop g2 a5 rook f7 king a6 um so here i think a very important idea for him was to go b5 check so even though it's not the top engine move after this it's going to be just almost impossible for me to open up this position it's just so locked up i mean, i can't really get rid of the pawns and then now winter is coming on the other side of the board so b5 i think would have been a really good way to take away the only hope and spark of counterattack that i could have had in this position okay so <laughs> so king a6 bishop e4 take um queen takes and then here take on b4 and now it's starting to get at least a little bit spicy i think was there something else yeah rook d1 was also i mean just i mean obviously everything's winning but by letting me do this i get to at least start envisioning a future where i have something and also he i will say he's starting to get low on time here like that was also once again i said it before but like a very good part of the tournament was like i never really got low in time and um if i survive i survived long enough where it became an issue for my opponents so rook c7 knight a5 so i did think about king b6 a lot and i was like it's better to what to die on your feet than to live on your knees and like this was like okay at least like i didn't get lit up and destroyed but it's just over here because after here he goes e6 and i can just never take this pawn because he has this outside pass pawn here and he's just gonna come all the way up eat this pawn up and i'm just gg'd so <laughs> so so this end game was uh hopeless so i was like well once again i guess i just got to keep going and then here's where i'm like whoa queen c2 i can go knight b3 check king b1 and take now here it gets pretty interesting because for example if he takes on c4 this is just checkmate so he can't do that if he takes here with check i can go queen takes take and fork him and then i'm still the favorite to win this this end game because his pawns are so loose so here after take he has to either go pawn takes or he has a he's a computer move king a2 
And the idea is now is not mate. Now this is still a very tough position to play. I'm going to take on d4 and his king is here. So this is definitely a computer type of defense. But um, it is a possible move. Because after uh, take on a3, I take on d4. And okay, he has still, he, like he's still technically equal here. Like uh, it's not dead loss for him. But the momentum is completely shifted. He is in time pressure. Um, and there's a lot of threats now. So this, uh, queen c3, I mean, there's a bunch of moves here. But take rook here, and then, I mean, so basically here, there's just so many threats. There's queen check, there's rook check, there's queen takes rook, there's queen here, and the rook here. Um, so here is just, start, he's starting to get overrun with threats, and he tries to go for this. And the problem is after here and this, the knight is like, you shall not pass. Every single square is covered. Black is chilling, we're good, and pretty much we made it. And then after this, rookie eight, we just keep it simple. All that fighting, all that work, we're not gonna make it something wild. We're just gonna go queen b7 and call it a day. And then here he ends up doing this, rook here, king c2, and then I actually even get to go rook here and just kind of win this position. Um, a nice and non end game tough type of way. So man, just what a fight, what a, mi I mean miracle. I mean, I gotta give myself some credit like this is like the fifth game that I was like just worse, but or not even worse, but just losing. But I just kept fighting, kept staying in it, and finding a way to uh, just win the position. So that's the I mean, that's fighting chess. I told you this tournament. I told my friends this tournament. I was gonna fight this tournament and find a way to win uh, or not to lose. And once again, you can't do it forever. It's a very non-sustainable. But it's nice to have that ability in me, that dog in me, where it's like I will not give up on myself. I will keep fighting. And now we have the last game. And before I go into that, let's go into the notes. Let me talk about the butterfly effect again. So like this game is actually very important. Because if I lose this game, I go from gaining 15 feet A points to losing like 5 to 8 points. That means I probably don't even play the last round. That means instead of gaining 30, 35 points from this tournament, I would end up losing or breaking even. Which is very, very different from like the, the butterfly effect. There's two different paths. One is you're happy, you're good, you made a lot of progress towards your goal. The other is now you're just exactly where you were all that time, all that money, all that work for pretty much nothing or for like one point. So butterfly effect, man. So okay, so let me go into this real quick. Good opening choice, I would say, with the style of the game. Avoided some other stuff. Uh, but yes, don't be lukewarm. If you're going to attack, then attack. If you want to play controlled, play controlled. This has come up before, so I'm going to make this times two. Move order, I'm going to make this times three, because it keeps coming. What is my point trying to do? I'm going to make this times three, because this is a big one. Uh, amazing fight, honestly, is also like times three. Like, just, it's happening again and again. And lastly, we have round nine, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so this is round nine, the last round of the Chicago Open 2023. So I'm playing international master Ryo Chen. Uh, strong international master promising kid um, and basically I get this position um, early in the opening and I can definitely tell he wasn't really sure of the opening so I always had kind of an upper hand if you want to beat kids definitely get them in positions they're not as comfortable with and if you definitely want to beat yourself get yourself in positions you're not comfortable with because I've shown that I'm good at beating myself <laughs> if I don't do the right things so that's a very know your openings or no ideas and and don't just play willy-nilly chess because that's how you get in trouble. So anyway, we get this position. He just went knight g4, and I just go d5. Trying to open up because basically um, he, he just played the opening kind of unambitiously. So I had time to get all my pieces in and do my thing. Um, so here, d5, a4. Now I trade off and go d4. And basically now I have a permanent space advantage. Um, this is a very nice position for black. Um, but once again, not like super like it's game over. It's just a nice position. Now here, he has some ideas if he's trying to attack the king. Now one thing I will say, um, get your bishop on f8, not on b8. If your bishop's on b8, then a lot of these attacks will be a problem. But the bishop on f8 is going to be um, more solid and strong. So rook c6, h4, bishop c8, h5, and then knight e7. So basically just trading off and getting ready to transition to a stronger position. Now here is pretty much the critical moment of the game. So here, if you ask yourself, what is my opponent trying to do? The only thing that he can do in this position is go bishop b3, hit f7, and then try to go rook a7. So like this, 
this in target f7. So keeping that in mind, um, the only way to stop that, or just a good move in this position, is just first go bishop e6, and now he's going to get strangled. Now he's not going to have any good moves, and this is when people start lashing out and making mistakes. So this is how I could have won this game. Now, it wasn't the... Actually, I thought it was a very important game, because I thought if I won, I would have a chance at $2,000. I would get my fourth I am norm, which I, it doesn't really matter. And I would gain from 30 to 40 points to like 50 points, which it would have been really insane. So I definitely wanted to win this game, but I also didn't want to lose this game. And that's kind of what hurt me this game. <laughs> Let me take this game one more time. But bishop g5 is it's just an okay move. It just kind of gives away the advantage because he's going to get exactly what I said he wanted to do. And that's the only thing he can do, and it's a very big idea in this opening that I'm learning. Take away what they're trying to do, take away that, and they're going to run out of moves, and then they're going to lash out, or they're going to make a mistake or a weakness. That's how you punish them, and that's how you play good positional grandmaster chess. So bishop g5, bishop b3, this, and then pretty much after this, just everything kind of comes off. It wasn't super, super um, draw. I had a couple moments. Now here, I'm, I was worried about all this f4, f5 hoopla. Um, yeah, but bishop e5, f4, bishop b8. It's like, it feels like white's getting some kind of counterplay, but at the same time, he's also making weaknesses, which is also another way to play. Induce pain out of your opponent, and then kind of hit him. But I was just playing this, this position very, very safe. Bishop d8, that, that this h6 pawn wasn't hanging. Did not want this. Um, so bishop d8, b3, c4, take, take. And then here it's like, I was like, maybe I can try to get something. But also here, like, it's just kind of nothing, right? Everything comes off. This pawn is just going to go. And then this pawn goes, and then it's a draw. So that is this position. That is my Chicago campaign from 2023. I mean, overall, I would say it was a good tournament. Um, definitely some good things I saw. Definitely some bad things that we saw too that I definitely have to improve. So last thing I would say, opening choice was great. Last time I got lit up by this kid in different variation. So I avoided that. Um, another classic, what is my opponent trying to do? So that we're seeing, what is that, times four? So this is a huge one. Every move, I got to do that. And getting more games is another big one that I keep saying. And yeah, if you have a good grip, and this is part of why you want to get more games in, um, you're going to be more confident in, in all these positions. So... Overall, I would give this tournament a B. Let me go ahead and make it way bigger because it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. If someone wanted to argue B minus, I would take it because I was just dead lost in so many positions. But since it was the first time I've been dead lost in so many positions and not lost, I'm going to take it as progress as a fighter, as a chess player. Um, and hopefully, or not hopefully, but for the next tournament, I will be ready for the opening in the middle game and the strategy. And... Uh, no more bad positions, and we're going to fight the same, but from higher ground. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, definitely kind of new with the spreadsheet, but I think it's a good thing. Um, apart from that, stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of tournaments coming up this summer. Um, basically, once end of June hits, it's just tournament after tournament after tournament after tournament. We're just going to keep running, running, running until um, we're just crushing it. All right. So apart from that, that's all I got. I'll see you guys later. Peace.